Mina, if I get out, do you promise that you'll put on a pair of Nike Pros for me? Hmm. Whatever color you want. Fuck. <laughs> All right, so where I left off when I was talking about Kaiju, I thought I only got to like episode three. I guess I made that video up until episode five. And before I get started, if you haven't seen all of season one of Kaiju number eight, I'll click off the video, go get that handle and then come back. But without further ado, uh, so we start episode six with an Avengers level threat with a mushroom that someone I guess didn't take care of in their lawn and started mutating into some demonic entity. And we see that this nigga has his roots growing all over the town as saplings are spawning out of him. And these niggas are about to tackle this like this is a Call of Duty campaign mission. Y'all boys got any questions? You're telling me out of all of our rookies, none of y'all niggas have questions for the fucking 75 foot tall fungal creature that's sitting right in front of us right now. That's what you're telling me. All right, when y'all boys start growing spores out of your arm, don't come crying to me. But no one has any questions, so let's get the show on the road. And you know, they're just going about it. Completely normal raid. Shinomiya is doing what she normally does and is taking out all the newborns. Kafka just got sent 50 feet south and found a pile of trash. And we see Reno, he's kind of like getting progressively stronger at like a pretty fast pace because he's like experimenting with this shit. Like he put freeze rounds in his gun and he was working the creatures too. And he has Kirishima looking at him like he's crazy. And then we're introduced to a uh, platoon leader, Nakanoshima. I'll call her a uh, platoon leader. I can't come up with a name. I'm gonna be honest, nah, that's a big name. I'm just gonna call her sexy. This is the haircut, it always gets me. Aaron Yeager, he could rock this shit, but like, it's different when a woman does it with the two strands. The two strands are critical. <laughs> and she's sitting here gawking at two of the um, other new recruits. So, I mean, if I was there, like, I would have been showing out for her for sure. No question. No question. If I if I saw I had to do my business in front of her, I would have been on some some monstrous, like, 20 kill streak at least within the first three minutes. And I would have been on my way to the raid boss already with her on my tail, chasing me because she's smelling my sweat pheromones type of stuff like that's that because I, I know how the I know how the cougars think like like I've been hit on by a lot of older people I don't know why people my age range don't uh <laughs> call me handsome like all the older women that I see going off on a tangent really quick I was at work this was kind of I didn't know whether to like take this as a compliment or if this was like kind of sad to be honest because she came up to me and she was like I, I love a tall dark handsome man and I was like left the ground a little bit like I jumped you know I, I was startled because I was just so excited for a second <laughs> but then her daughter comes in daughter's probably like 35 40 and she was like yeah no she's been hitting on a lot of like younger dudes like yourself ever since her husband died and i was like like i didn't even know how to respond i was just like thank you miss but then i proceeded to give her my number and then we went out to dinner a couple times you know so i mean i was just doing what i felt like was right for the community but no and then that's like a common thing but yeah to carry on i would have been wielding these weapons akimbo dual wielding these shits for platoon leader i'm gonna call her pln i would have been dual wielding these shits for pln doing a reaper ultimate and i wouldn't care who i shot friendly fire or not i don't care as long as i'm not shooting her but no so as we're watching this we see that it looks like kafka kind of found his role and he was since he was so involved in the cleanup crew shit he knows their anatomy like to a t so he was figuring out where the core was of the corpses and stuff like that Tacho, over Tacho. copy so i found the core it's at the base of the neck so let all your soldiers know that but these niggas are fucking straight up they have reproductive organs near their rears so i guess they're taking this shit through the back door i don't know I don't know, these fungal types are always like the freaky types as well. And he got recognition from the vice captain and stuff. So it was a good moment. You know, it's like you, you see him progress. Obviously shit's gonna go south because the nigga is a kaiju himself. But like, it was nice to see him making progress even though he's the weakest one physically. But he he's playing like a great support role. Like, But yeah, no, they stagger him. And then Hoshina is rooftop carrying around with her like a portable napalm strike or something i don't like i don't know what this fucking weapon is and she was locked onto him and she starts powering up like she's fucking deku or something going 100 percent. and then we have the vice captain talking about kafka watch this one closely she's about to blow this city to fucking bits and i can't wait to have the construction workers working overtime to clean this mess up and you would have thought she was done after that after we see the fungus falling forward and we're looking at his lower spine you know i would i would think the job is done <laughs> Third round locked and loaded, ready to go. And I know third time's a charm. Third time's a charm. We still have some debris we gotta handle. And this is a fungal type, so we probably should like get him the fuck off our planet, turn him to dust. So I understand this third shot. I didn't think it was necessarily necessary, but just to be safe. And she's a keeper. 
because if my girl was trying to impress me the way that she's trying to impress Kafka right now by doing terrorist amounts of damage to the surrounding area just to prove to me like how strong of a woman she is I would be standing up there next to her in this way that he's envisioning within a week's time absolutely I would have been bricked up looking at that shit nigga <laughs> and you always got to appreciate good sword play because she was cold like she's like a brute powerhouse type of force but she's not mobile like that so she has to like camp from the back lines and charge that shit up for like five minutes you know but the vice captain is the one that's swift in short range and they almost get run up on and he does some Zoro shit where he just pulls the sword out of the sheet locks it back in and the nigga is diced into 16 pieces and the purple touch on it too is just so nice and then you think it's over and then the fungus nigga starts spawning in like the next 35 generations of his bloodline and they're just terrorizing the city but no, so we see Reno and Kirishima kind of isolated away from the pack. And then they run into number nine. And he just instantly starts unloading his finger pistol on Kirishima. And Reno is dodging the shit. Like, he's evasive. And they really do fast movement good in this show. Like, with Kafka and number nine in, like, a couple of the fights later. They're, like, teleportation. Like, just quick movements and the sounds of it. They really hit that shit. And I can't be one to, like, give a proper opinion on the situation. Because it's not like I'm in the military or something you know so i really don't know how it is on the battlefield but if there was like an alien sort of threat to me and i was with my brother on the battlefield i don't know like the way that kirishima is constantly like in this rival mindset with reno maybe it's just because i've seen it so many times like in all these other shows it just like it was kind of annoying me a little bit because reno does not have a care in the world about it kirishima's competing with himself damn near and it's not that i don't like his character it's just this part of it was just like slightly annoying for me like when he saved him and he was like, Reno, you're not saving me. Like, don't tell me to leave. I'm saving you, dumbass. Like, okay, let's like beat this nigga. <laughs> like, I get it. Yeah, and I thought it was gonna get serious once Reno started praying to the fucking gods. Hiroshima lets out an electric round, stun locks him for a second. And Reno's like, God, just this one moment, let me just go crazy. Let me just let me just show out this once. Let me just stun on these boys one time. Give me more power than the captain. Why not? Just give me more power. And this nigga's turned into a death machine. Like unlimited ammo. And he he unleashed like 300 rounds. <laughs> just going crazy and i thought he would have at least done like some damage by how they kind of hyped up that scene i thought he would have maybe given him like a wound but he did what gara did to uh sasuke in the tuning exam and kind of put himself in like a, a defensive ball and he gave him seven shots to the chest area so i didn't think there was like any coming back from this i'm not gonna lie if he died here it would have been very fast but just by how he was introduced like no one would have expected that shit so i think with how promising his character looked it would have maybe been a good thing for the story maybe but i'm just talking but yeah no number nine embarrassing them so bad he's he had both of them praying kirishima is sitting here on his knees saying please god or the devil <laughs> you have to be getting worked really bad to be praying to something and don't care what it is all right time for you to die you smell like shit muscle boy yeah, and Kafka's right hook is taking down Javante Davis for sure because he knocked this nigga's head clean off, separated his spine. There is another scene that was coming up. There's a couple scenes that like, so that's what I'll give this show. The fight scenes, some of the coldest of the year. It's just the way Kafka was like, this is the stuff you've been shooting at them? These are fucking marshmallows, nigga. And the visuals of his eyes sort of like, tweaking out and then folding his arms and then just defending this shit by screaming like he had infinity on oh my gosh no and then <laughs> i remember the day i watched this i was on break from work and then number nine was stunned and the nigga just up in his fucking grill <laughs> his fucking face to face that was the hard part about it like there's a difference like when you're standing in a nigga's face about a fight granted i've never been in a real fight in my life but i'm just letting you know how i do it like i'm not gonna be sitting in his face standing straight up i'm gonna be hunched over like you know because that's sort of like that instigating sort of like what the fuck are you gonna do about it begging them to hit you that's that's how kafka pulled up here and then he started jojo in him and he was just getting straight up speed blitzed and he did one of his iconic overhand rights with the fucking jets coming out the back and i thought it was over genuinely so i mean this guy's pretty durable because he sent him from tokyo to fucking kyoto and i knew some bullshit was gonna happen once kafka pulled up staring down at him and he just didn't finish the job quickly and number nine gets away because the soldiers pulled up and obviously kafka's gonna save them and he just vanishes into thin air i don't know how he does it and some of the hardest combat in the show has to be when vice captain is fighting whether it's with Kafka, whether it's with the next enemy, like the maneuvers that this nigga pulls out with the 
fucking dual wielding daggers. It was just nasty because he caught Kafka slipping in the alleyway and he was just like on his ass chasing him. And then he's rocking the purple eyes too. I think it's just the purple too that like has me excited right now. And he assumes his stance and turns on his Byakugan, takes off his limiters and he's ready to go. And that shit was hard. And he starts working Kafka, pulling out air slashes like fucking Zoro. And as this was going on, I really didn't know how Kafka was going to get away because I know he could just retreat, but then he get like Vice Captain's also fucking fast. But he ends up catching one of his blades and then hitting the blade and then scurrying away. And Vice Captain's confused because he's like, what the fuck? Like, he didn't even seem like he wanted to fight me. So he was thinking about that the whole time. And then we see number nine during golden hour, catch a civilian slipping and robbing his car like GTA and just drive off into the sunset. They go out for a team dinner and then the vice captain has something to say. All right, y'all, I need to make an announcement. Kafka, you did a whole lot during this little raid that we had. I, all we know really is kill, kill, kill. You know, you gave us direction in order to find out where the core was and how to properly disassemble these niggas. And um, I really got to give it to you. But physically, you know, you're still a weak ass nigga. And I'm surprised because you're supposed to have that unk strength now and you don't. So uh, we appreciate the help and all that, but I mean, we don't need you on the force, so you are fired. That's what I would say if I was an asshole, but I'm not. You're full officer, dude. You have now been promoted. <laughs> yeah, but no, we see his relationships with the captain, vice captain, everyone kind of going up and getting better. And vice captain is a bit distraught about how number eight got away. We see a little scene of him training and like shadow boxing the nigga and like remembering his movements and stuff like that so that shit was kind of cool too but i'd say number nine was cool and it's clear he's going to be a possibly the main enemy of the show but when this next nigga pulled up number 10 this was good this was good because number nine was trying to do this shit incognito and like kind of like get like whittle his way in there sneakily this number 10 nigga called in a meteor strike on the base and this scene of kafka standing here as the fireballs are coming down it shit looked like your name but like the violent version he had pterodactyls coming out of this shit like i don't even know what was going on but number 10 just looks like a nigga from elden ring at first he's basically just like looking for a strong nigga to fight are you the strongest one here uh, i guess it's gotta be because the captain is not here you know so and i'm i'm vc that's what they call me. That's like my abbreviated shit. So, uh, yeah, I'm the strongest nigga here. I see, because I'm just trying to box. I'm envisioning it now. I'm going to, like, grab your head. Two hands, by the way, right and left side. Twist it off like a bottle cap. I'm going to throw that shit in the air and bicycle kick it. As if I'm like Ronaldo. It's like, I'm, I just got so many plans. And I really just want to do that with the strongest nigga to put to myself that I'm the strongest nigga because I'm insecure. Really, I am. I'm, I'm just insecure about my strength and I just want to prove to everyone that I can do damage. And they just start going back and forth. Everyone's doing their thing. We see Shinomiya pull up with a fucking God of War weapon. And she's hard. She is. She, it's like, <laughs> I'll give it to her. She's, she's killing it. She's killing it. I like her. And it looks like number 10 has a set of like human teeth and kaiju teeth. So I don't know if he's also like a Kafka hybrid. Maybe. But VC is working him a little bit. He purposely brought him to the training ground so he could let loose. And, and just the slashes and number 10 like chanting out rivals, rivals, rivals as they're going back and forth. And the niggas is just dicing his ass. But then he had number 10 go into second phase. And like, ah, it's so ridiculous how I forgot about that being an Elden Ring veteran myself. And yeah, no, once he transforms, Kafka's spidey sense starts tingling and the vice captain's kind of getting overpowered and he gets launched into the wall. And we're starting to get the flashbacks of like how he even came into this profession and his first interaction with the captain and all that. So I knew he was about to start unleashing a flurry of slashes. I knew it was coming up, but then he gets caught slipping and then he's about to get eaten by the guy. And I'm seeing Kafka looking at him from the distance. So I'm like, okay, this is where he's probably gonna transform. But then you hear Mina hit us with a great work, everyone. Your savior's here. And then they start working this kaiju like Toto and Itadori and start jumping him. And again, Mina's just sexy as hell because I don't like, I still don't know why she has this tiger on her. This tiger follows her around like Akamaru does Kiba. But then Shinomiya hops in briefly as well. And then the vice captain and her start working together to damage him a bit more. And then the captain unleashes 96% of that shit in this blast setting into oblivion. And I thought that shit was it. And then the nigga turned this shit into like a planetary devastation. Well, well, well. You know, I may just be a talking head right now, but it, to me, I don't know. To me, it looks like this fight's kind of a draw. And y'all believe work me, I'll give it to you. 
I'll give it to you, but it was an off day for me. I'm not going to lie. I was operating at 80%. I'm just coming off an ankle injury. So, I mean, catch me at 100. I think I'm winning that fight easy, but I mean, sayonara. I guess, you know, that's the best That's the best advice I got for you here because I'm blowing this bitch the fuck up. But once he starts talking his shit, Kafka goes into a full-on sprint and then he's airborne. And then he reveals himself. It was bound to happen soon. Like, it, we, we kept getting so close to it. It was definitely going to happen within this season for sure. Yeah, but then, no, he launches this shit damn near into orbit. And if you look at the explosion <laughs> that this shit caused, this would have probably like been such a big explosion. The core of the fucking earth would have been showing because that shit was a bit ridiculous. Whenever he's doing like a charged up attack and he's screaming, the animation gets so nice and just like, oh my gosh. And the colors of the electricity, it's so cold. But then he drops down and then he shields everyone by just staring in disbelief of what happened. Kafka, nah. Kaiju number eight, put your hands the fuck up. I cannot believe we had a Kaiju in this defense force. I mean, we gotta you just kill him, right? Like straight up, I, I think that's the best course of action. You're damn right about that, eye patch. But I think we should make him into some sort of weaponry. Or maybe like, and don't judge me for this, but maybe like, you know how niggas get weird with tentacles and shit? when it comes to like sex toys like maybe we could go some route with that you know i don't know i mean as head scientist i may just have to give this nigga to my left a lobotomy i don't know what he's talking about but the weapon reroute is one we could definitely think about listen there'll be no sex toys no nothing because this this decision lies in my hands we'll bring him in first and then i'll make the decision on whether or not on what we're gonna do with that fuck nigga and we're getting ready to escort him to federal prison coach pick that head up fuck nigga you're coming home believe that you're coming home the fuck is Reno talking about? Reno stepped out of line and he will be doing push-ups for me later. But there are no cameras in here. And I know what you're thinking, but that's not happening today. We gotta get you out of these cuffs first. But uh, we believe in you. We believe in you and you dashed out there and you saved us without hesitation. And it's like, these people may not know you, honey bear, but I know you. You know, I've known you from the jump. We go back, trenches, you know, me and you. I could lose my job for this. I could lose everything I've worked for, but how am I supposed to stand atop here if you're not on top of me? So let's just go through the legal process right now. So let's sit down. Kafka Jimeno, in accordance with Article 13 on the Defense Force Code, I hereby, Mina, if I get out, you promise that you'll put on a pair of Nike Pros for me? Hmm. Whatever color you want. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, so after that, she and Omiya is trying to pull some strings with her dad and Mina's talking about separating people into different platoons so they could get stronger in the event that he does come back or in the event that he doesn't come back. And she feels like them being here all together is just uh, hindering their growth a little bit. So everyone's trying to do their best to bring Kafka back, basically. And for the head director, his method of doing so is to just box him one-on-one. -on -one. And he pulls up on him, releases his shackles, and then he just ups the thing on him. And then blitzes him and then tries pulling out his liver. He doesn't even have his gear on yet. So her dad's a freak. Shinomiya, not Shinomiya Sr. Shinomiya Jr., she's in the audience and like she's like screaming for Kafka, but she's like screaming his government name every time. She'll be like Kafka de Quavius Ibeno, like, and she's like screaming. But no, so Shinomiya Sr. takes a biopsy from Kafka and he's just like, I'm not a kaiju, I'm not a kaiju, I'm Kafka. And he's like, all right, you are? You know what? put on my gauntlets and then he starts shooting up like iron man and i guess his gear has like the strength of kaiju number two from like back in his prime and they square up and his shit has some like conqueror's hockey to it or something and then he takes off kafka's arm completely and starts blitzing the fuck out of him and it wasn't any crazy animation either but they were just doing a really good job at like showing us the action and the speed of it and the different camera angles that we were getting of him on the floor too in the slow-mo of shinomiya's like three-piece combo Us! 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 yeah and he, he's damn near warping through space and time trying to beat kafka's ass and when kafka's trying to get away but his legs are already off and he's like stuck and he doesn't know what the fuck to do that shit was so tough and the the ost and then there's shinomiya in my ear again he been you know, the quavius kafka what is he talking about but he ends up defending it and the only reason he was able to defend it because the kaiju power was starting to take over him now and the visual at the end of episode 11 was crazy this scene alone was one of the best animated scenes of this season where he completely transforms and starts blitzing him and then you just have the impact frames and like 
it looks like a thick marker almost just coming off of his body as he's running like full fucking speed ahead roaring and then with this halloween horror nights ass like jump scare at the end this shit was so fucking clean and then in in the last episode they just really get to like that him and Shino Mia like are just really boxing and we kind of can just see I don't know if he's going to be able to harness his power to this extent but it's it shows that it's possible like the type of shit this nigga can do and he's only just scratching the surface of how powerful he could be because he's like howling and doing like EMP type of shits and Shino Mia is holding his ground too dodging his shit and everything so he's has to be top three niggas in the verse but he dodges Kafka's punch and instead of like retracting he does some owl shit in 360s his whole spine just to get extra momentum on the next one. And he still got blocked too. And this was one of the sickest things so far. Kafka, or I guess the kaiju that's taken over him, basically shot the core out of him and then respawned right behind him from the core. And then just the visual on that, oh my gosh, it was so fucking crisp. And then they, they're in another JoJo clash again. Kafka transforms into like a red variant and starts blasting him in the OST that they were playing made me really think that this nigga was gonna kill her dad because this was like a sad song and i thought this was gonna be the start of shinomiya's villain arc as well like i didn't know what was gonna happen i thought he was gonna kill the dad here have to go on the run on some like rogue ninja boruto shit and then have to like prove his innocence again or something and she was gonna be on the hunt for him i don't i don't know he gets consumed by the kaiju more and he's drowning but guess who comes and saves him our girl i'll always be by your side and he's about to land the most destructive right hook of 2024 and this shit was just way too much there was no need to like cock this shit back as far as he was about to but this it's clear that the kaiju that kafka is merged with has some sort of beef with this nigga because this seemed almost like a calculated planned attack and that there was some animosity or beef here brewing because this is a hateful ass punch but he's able to take himself back over and he guts himself i'm kafka de quavius ibeno and i'm not kaiju number eight but after everything's said and done we get a briefing Everyone assembles again for the final meeting on what we're going to do with this nigga. All right, General Shinomiya has finished his assessment. And what you say now is not going to sway his decision because his decision is already made. Um, but we just want to hear what you have to say about Kaiju number eight. I mean, I'm going to keep it frank with y'all boys. I know him personally and he wouldn't do this. That's all I got to say. I don't need to say much more. If you kill him, I'm off. I'm off. I quit. Y'all niggas are strong and shit, but like... Let's be honest, Mr. Clean, your prime ended 35 years ago. You know, you're gonna probably be in a care home in the next two to three years, but I'm not even gonna get started on you. And I'm looking at you, Eye Patch. I actually haven't lost an eye in combat, but that's you, you know why? Because you're slow and you need to hit the weight room as well. There's no way you're talking to us like that, actually. Yeah, what the fuck is here? Actually, you know what? I'm not finished. Um, Kafka's a great defensive officer. No, you were finished though. No, actually I'm not. So I'm going to continue on. Kafka is a great defensive officer and Kaiju or not, I've only seen him provide for the human race and do justice and good. And he, he lives, if there's one person that lives by our code, it's him. But if some shit pops off, I take full responsibility, jail me, kill my family. This is my man and you're not taking him away from me. Yeah, no, I don't trust her. She might be a kaiju herself. Can we test her, actually? Director, put those gauntlets on. Let's swing that shit on her and see what she does. Let's test her and see if she's a kaiju. Thank you, Captain Ashino. Return to your post. Sometimes y'all need to just shut the fuck up. Y'all just need to shut the fuck up. You swear you're so high and mighty. I will take every single one of you. I will take you niggas on 10v1, and I'll direct this show by myself. Here's the verdict. Number eight will live and he will fight for us and he will not be converted into any weaponry or sex toys or any science experiments whatever the fuck you freaks are thinking i don't even know how who hired y'all because it wasn't me none of you are the captains of this ship and none of you will be and if anyone has any objections just know they will be met with a one-on-one -on -one with me and no that's that everyone gets the notification on their phone that he's been released at the end of the episode we also see number nine completely take over the nigga's life that he consumed and he's basically learning how to become a human himself he's got security cameras and maps of the whole entire city and he's just becoming i guess like a god tier intellectual being so i mean overall it's like this show is an interesting one because i really like looking at it a second time front to back i don't think it really does anything super new and super crazy in terms of like story and characters like they have a nice cast like i like shinomiya i like reno reno's sick mean is cool 
vice captain is cool like I, I like the cast and the characters are really enjoyable and i think they have a lot of diversity in terms of personality but i also feel like at least with a couple of them that they don't stick to one trope either which is like something that's really important to me like i like when characters have personality and it's not just like like with kirishima i forgot the nigga's name but with the red haired guy like he has like that reno rivalry trope and it's like it could get a little annoying at times you know but like with shinomiya for example it's like she seems like she has a lot of personality and it's not just like one thing like we know she's strong yes but it's like she has a soft side to her but she she also has a side where it's like i understand if kafka kills this nigga right now i have to kill him we saw different aspects of her character and obviously it's just because she's a more important character at the moment than the red-haired guy but still i like that she's fleshed out a little bit more reno's fleshed out like that i don't know i think their character development for the most part was like solid with the more important characters and uh choreography and the action the animation were very solid like damn near 10 out of 10 the ost was really good opening and ending those were really good aspects of the show too and overall it was just a very enjoyable and fun watch like i would compare this almost to like how demon slayer season two was just straight up like fun but nothing super deep that's sort of how this one felt like this felt super fun but not too deep but promising like with how number nine seems like he's gonna get a, a bit more like advanced and evolved than like your typical kaiju and shit like that but i mean other than number nine like there's really nothing else going on behind the scenes in the show at least the way it looks right now so overall i think i'd have to give it like i enjoy i there hasn't been a show in a minute where i was like excited to watch it on a weekly basis and every saturday i looked forward to watching kaiju so honestly i think i'd have to give this like 8.6 something around there I, I really did like it and i don't think there was like one bad episode like it was pretty linear and i enjoyed it the whole way i think that's all i got for it so um that's about it hopefully i have some more elden ring videos out on the second channel too and uh that's about all i got so if you stayed for this long in the video i appreciate you for watching and without further ado on to the next one and yeah that's it